All right, here's part two. So we talked about a couple of different periods of art and Cubism and Dada and surrealism through the 20th century. And now we're going to go into the 1960s and talk about Robert Rauschenberg and his artwork and more specifically uh, where we're going with this assignment for you to make a collage on Google Drawing. So uh, he's a pop artist, um, also might be called a... a, a a surrealist in some ways and maybe a Dadaist in other ways. He was born in Texas. And when he was a young man, he moved to New York City because it was the art capital of the world. And then later in life, when he became a successful artist, he, he, he did his work in Florida. But he sold most of his work in New York City. He, he's an interesting artist in the fact that he was a painter, but he was also a sculptor and a printer. He would do um, printmaking of his images and sell multiple copies of this. But the, he was he was unique in the way that he combined his paintings and his sculptures together. And I'll show you a few of those. And they were called combines. And when he was a young artist, especially, he would walk the streets of New York and, and pick things out of the garbage that he could work into his art. So a lot of them are just found objects. And I'm thinking uh, one of your options down the road with uh, maybe one of our future projects here in these um home assignments would be to use objects that you might find at home in, in making some art. So a neo dada is means new. Neo means new. So he's kind of working in the style of the Dadaism, which was like, you know, from 40, 50 years earlier. And but he's he's doing that same style. So he's called a neo dadaist A pop artist means he uses popular images. You can see him in a picture of here of, uh, of John F. Kennedy. Um, he incorporates images from uh, popular culture in his artwork. And some of his art has almost surrealistic qualities. So surrealism and Dadaism are kind of linked together. Well, let's, let's take a look at some of these. This one's called Untitled, but then he puts a title in it. So it says Untitled, but in parentheses it says Man with White Shoes. So maybe, and there's a mirror incorporated here, and it's, there's little rollers here, and there's a, a stuffed chicken. So this is a combine. And then it has a whole collage, a bunch of different images, maybe some from the newspaper, a parachute, and these people, and some other pictures of landscapes and portraits and things. And this is the main focal point here. And then he incorporates, it looks like almost a leg from uh, an old piano or something. So this is a, com a combine, a, com a combination of sort of like two-dimensional art, like these flat images in the collage, and a, com a combination of uh, three-dimensional art, you know, the, the stuffed chicken he includes here. <laughs> Here's a stuffed goat, you know, you find a, and then he did painting on the face of the goat and he's got this large stick here and he's got a, a, an old tire wrapped around the goat here. Um, and this one's called monogram. And then it's on top of one of his paintings here. So the painting is an abstract. You see the capital letter D and some other letters and things. It looks like a footprint here. So it's interesting to say almost like a human torso here. So lots of kind of confusing things thrown together in that style of Dadaism. Here's a one called Canon, and I'm not sure I understand all these works, but he's got corrugated cardboard and some of his paintings, and he has this uh, 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 bag of sand suspended below this piece, and then he has a stuffed raven kind of coming out of it. This is, again, a combine of two-dimensional art with three-dimensional art. But he was breaking new ground here. And here's some of his prints. Um, he did a whole series of these, and this is just 2D art, and it would be like a lithograph print, like uh, high color um, reproductions. He could make copies of these, and it's showing like the buildings of New York. It's kind of a almost a, a montage of New York. And then you have these bright red colors here and these other colors, you know, uh, showing maybe the colorfulness of New York. You got the Statue of Liberty and some buildings and stop signs and everything. And it kind of shows the confusion of living in a big city. This one is done the year after uh, John F. Kennedy was shot. So it's called Buffalo 2. Um, you know, the buffaloes were killed and John F. Kennedy was killed. So maybe there's a connection there. And you see symbols from the United States. You see John F. Kennedy here. You see a, a parachute. looks like it's from the... Uh, um, the space program. This would be a helicopter maybe picking up the uh, Mercury astronauts when we first went into states. Not sure what the symbol of the key means. You get an eagle and Coca-Cola and a cafeteria sign here. 
and some other interesting diagrams. I'm not sure what it all means, but it's kind of an interesting composition. And you got the hand repeated here to kind of create this sense of unity. So I'm going to talk to you guys about how you can change the color and uh, of shapes and, and, and repeat them really easily in this project. Here's another montage. It has the same picture of John F. Kennedy kind of flipped. Same pictures of the signs. He repeats some of these things. This looks like a close-up of some legs of furniture or some piping or something. You've got a Native American, um, Statue of Liberty, some bridges. So some images from New York City. you got kind of a color wheel worked in here for some reason. This is the one I really want to talk to you guys about, though. And this one kind of goes with the uh, last presentation of Crisis Art. It's called signs. And there isn't pictures of signs in here, but it's almost like the sign of the times. And this shows us so much of what's going on in New York, in, um, in uh, the United States in the 1960s. First off, you have three people who were assassinated. 1963, John F. Kennedy was shot. Then his brother, Robert Kennedy, as he ran for president, was killed in 1968. And actually, and um, and then that same year, 1968, there's uh, Martin Luther King in his coffin, and he's there next to a person who's a civil rights protester who got beat up by police, and he's bleeding here. You also have this kind of red image. I'm going to show you how to do this. It's kind of cool of uh, of a Janis Joplin, and she was a popular singer at the time, which showed a lot of emotion. You can see it in her face as she's singing there, and she died of a drug overdose in the 60s. And then, of course, the uh, the Apollo astronauts landed on the moon in 1969. Vietnam was going on through the whole 60s. So we have this Jeep and these soldiers and Vietnam protesters here. And then you have uh, civil rights protesting here um, at the 1968 Olympics, uh, the Black Power Movement. So it's interesting. You have a, a whole combination of images. Let's take some a look at some details here. Well, let's give you some facts. It's a silkscreen print. There's 250 of these made. So he could sell each of these for a couple of, you know, a few hundred dollars and he could make a lot of money. Uh, the summary of the 1960s failures with uh, people dying in the Vietnam War and accomplishments, uh, people landing on the moon and some movement in the civil rights uh, movement. So who, who I already told you, Janis Joplin, the Kennedy brothers, Martin Luther King all died in the 60s. He said about this piece, it was conceived to remind us of love, terror, violence of the last 10 years, danger, lies, and forgetting. So it's kind of like a, a, like a snapshot of the 1970s. Here's a detail. And this looks almost like some type of lens, like you're really focused on this thing here. The detail of Robert Kennedy and Janis Joplin and war protesters. There are some soldiers there. You can see the the civil rights marcher got beat up. So this is going to lead us into our next assignment. And I'm just going to give you an overview now, but you're going to get more detail um, as you're watching the um, videos that are connected with the, the assignment sheet that you've already seen. So you're going to be um, creating art using Google Drawing. You're going to use images and symbols from the internet to create an original composition. I'm going to show you how you can manipulate the sizes and the color and the position and the transparencies. Like, uh, so you'll be watching a couple of tutorials on these. And then how you can add shapes and forms to embellish the artwork. And this is a piece that I did. I just wanted to show you. That I don't know if you can recognize this. In the background here is a, a close-up of the coronavirus uh, using electron microscope it's kind of how it looks there and then I, I flutter the confetti of hearts all around it um, that the love of the earth is going to help us get through this um, and then I have two symbols revolving around the earth here uh, an angel uh, representing uh, mercy and goodness and uh, a skeleton representing death of the people who have died. So this is this is my piece I kind of put together. And in one of the next tutorials, you're going to see how um, how this was put together, and I'll kind of take it apart for you to see. All right. Hey, you guys, remember, if you ever have any questions about any of this part of the assignment, remember you need to email me or attend one of the tutorials, uh, not tutorials, but the um, 
check in with me with office time. I'm going to be available at during office time. We'll maybe have some Zoom videos or something, uh, uh, Zoom sessions for you guys to get to. All right. Be sure and ask me if you have any questions.